Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for this closer look at three Dr. Steve Finn games. He is a designer that has definitely caught my attention and everybody else's with his game that came out in 2021 that you're probably familiar with, Floriferous. This made a lot of people's top 10 and top 15 games of the year, mine included. My husband loved it. Every time I share it with people, they really, really enjoy it. And I want to tell you why this is so popular and why you might like his earlier games. So Dr. Steve Finn has his company, Dr. Finn's Games, and he designs and publishes through a small independent publisher. That's just something that's really cool and I like to support people who are putting great stuff out there and they may not have the biggest company and the biggest you know, platform and the biggest marketing budget, but I do have to say that there's something really, really great here. And, and I think that he's a master of the short game, the straightforward game that really maximizes and focuses on one or two mechanics that work together so well. That's my overall take with just every game that I've played of his, uh, which is a handful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the easiest, shortest, lightest game, and I'm going to move through the 20 minute game, which is the little flower shop, the 30 minute game, which is the butterfly garden, and I'm going to end with mining colony, which is a 40 minute game. All right, so let's jump right into it. The little flower shop plays one to four. It takes 20 minutes to play and its ranking on Board Game Geek is a 1.5 difficulty out of five. So when you open up the box, you're gonna have this really nice uh, player board that everyone is going to uh, play on. They're gonna put all of their cards on this board. And so everyone's gotta have at least this much space to play with. Um, the base mechanic of the game though is card drafting. And this is it, you get the box, you see that there's this box insert, but it's really just to support all of the player boards. So I've got my player board here, and I've got all of these cards. And I like that this game is wholly based on that drafting. Um, there's gonna be money cards that you've got in here to keep track of all of your income. Um, that's your little cash register because you're running a flower shop and you wanna sell flowers for money. Um, but you've got these vases. Everyone starts off with these base vases. So you've got your yellow player, green player, uh, red, and then blue. And I like that there's this card drafting and this set collection, and it just plays so smoothly. It plays so fast. And the whole uh, point here is that you want to put these uh, vases, they fit really nicely here on the bottom. I mean, look how pretty that is. Don't you think that's kind of pretty? I think so. And what you want to do is match what they have here. So I want to put this flower of any kind right here and I want to just pop it in the vase. Uh, and if I do that, I'm going to get the amount of uh, petals that are at the bottom. I'm going to get two points for that. And so players are allowed to move their flowers around um, inside of their vases when they need to. Here's a cute twofer, right? So if I want that one, I can put that in there and I get two flowers of any kind. Um, I've got a really beautiful tulip and a sunflower, and it gives me one victory point. Um, and it just is so smooth and easy. There are a couple special cards, but not many, which makes this game obviously the most simple of the games. You've got um, these uh, baskets that you can buy, and the baskets are um, essentially hung from up here. You have other spaces for your vases to go on these two shelves. But you essentially can have up to three of these cutie uh, little baskets that hang down. Uh, but this flower here, you can essentially sell this uh, card and it says that if you have one flower, two flowers, or three flowers on a card, it's going to give you cash. Uh, and if you sell it with the vase, you get bonus cash. Um, so this is a way to get rid of those flower cards that you can't place in your vases because your vases are going to give you victory points. So this game is really straightforward and it's simple, but the thing I like the most about it is you've got card drafting and you've got set collection. And every player just has their own board and it works really, really smoothly. 
I think card drafting is just a wonderful mechanic. It's such an easy one. You've got a, a hand in front of you. You take a card and you pass the cards to your left or to your right, and then you draft another card after playing it. it it's just so streamlined. It's so simple, and it adds the strategy that you need to a game um, that is pretty straightforward and, and very player oriented. There's a little bit of that friction, a little bit of that conflict of, well, should I take this card now or should I, you know, hope that it comes back around to me next time or that I can find that kind of card later. And so you're really stuck with these choices. And I like those choices. Um, I like how clean everything is and how you just get to build your beautiful little flower shop in front of you. A really solid 20 minute game here. It might take you just a little bit more uh, the first time through, but this is great for players uh, 10 and up. And I would say that it's better to have more players with this game than fewer players, even though it states that it's one to four. It's really best with four players or three to four players because of that drafting. Um, I've played this with two and it worked just fine, but there's uh, it's more dynamic with more players and with that drafting um, of, of the, the cards when you have more players passing around and people are taking out the cards that they want. All right, moving up in just a little bit of complexity is the Butterfly Garden. Uh, this does state 14 and older as opposed to the 10 and older for the little uh, flower shop, but in the Butterfly Garden, uh, you've got the main mechanic is set collection, and there's this really interesting uh, bidding phase that players go through to collect cards. Um, so every player gets this really wonderful uh, card that tells them exactly what to do, what your phases are, um, and they're just really, really pretty. You've got your five uh, boards here because this is a two to five player game. So I'm going to lay out my green board here because I usually play green. Uh, the rest of uh, the cards in here, you've got these two uh, decks and you've got your uh, butterfly catchers and that's it. So you pull this guy out uh, and, and then you're just ready to go. So again, very few components and even smaller box than before. So I've got these cards here. These are my butterfly cards. And then these are the cards that you're essentially trying to um, spend your butterfly cards on. So with this, it's a weight of 1.5 out of 5, um, and you've got set collection and that really interesting bid phase that, that I'll talk about. Um, so players are going to have cards in their hand, um, and what they're going to do is they're going to play one of the cards down, saying this is the card that I want to play. Everyone flips it over, so there's kind of like this blind uh, selection and you will reveal simultaneously and the lowest number card is going to be the person who gets to select from the new cards, uh, these are the butterfly cards, that they get to take into their hand and potentially have a bonus. So up in the corner, you're gonna see these uh, little symbols up here. Your card might actually give you an automatic bonus um, whenever you uh, collect your card. Now, what you wanna do though is collect your uh, butterflies in this jar right here. And so you keep all of your butterflies turned this way. And so you will be able to see I've got a wild butterfly. I've got um, a, oh boy, what's that one called? The red and the black one. Oh, it's like the most famous one. Why can't I think of that butterfly? Okay. It's gonna, it's, it's, you're gonna get mad at me. Um, but I can't remember the butterfly. Monarch? Is it the monarch? Okay. Um, so you're gonna have your butterflies over here. And then when you want to essentially spend them, to invest in uh, buying one of these locations, you have to match. So right now I need a, a, a black and a um, blue. So we have wilds and wilds can be whatever you want them to be, um, which includes a black, can be any kind of butterfly. Uh, but I don't have the, um, the monarch, the red one pictured there. So I can't buy that one. Let me see if there's one of these that I can actually invest in with just two. Aha! I can buy this one. So this one says I need a green. Well, I can take this uh, wild butterfly and I can essentially say, here's my wild butterfly. And then I take this into my hand and at the end of the game, I've got three points. And you want to get uh, different colored uh, buildings to get bonuses. So I want to get a red building and a blue building and a purple building and a green building. And that's going to give me that kind of set collection uh, at the end of the game. So I think that um, Butterfly Garden has some really interesting stages and steps to get where you want, but it's still so straightforward and streamlined. You've got butterfly cards, and I love the fact that you you bid with them, you play with them, and they're numbered um, one all the way up to, 
Ooh, I don't know. I see 55 here. Is that the highest? It might be 55. And so you are trying to bid for priority in selecting more butterflies to bring into your uh, hand. Uh, and, and, I, and I love that. I love that a lot. Um, it's really, really interesting. And then you have to, at the end of your turn, be ready to uh, essentially invest in that location and to, you know, spam the butterflies that you've saved up in your jar to get those locations for the victory points and for the set collection. So there are a couple stages. There's some really nice uh, player interaction, but not too much. And I think that it works incredibly well. It is about the same um, complexity and difficulty as the little flower shop, as BGG says they're both 1.5 out of five. It might take just a little bit longer, um, but it's still equally as delightful, really, really wonderful theme, and a nice amount of stages to get to the victory points, which is really the only thing that matters, is collecting those locations and, and, and essentially releasing those butterflies into their natural habitat. Okay, let's end with the longest, most complex of these games, which is Mining Colony. This is for one to four players, takes about 40 minutes, and the age for this is uh, 14. So you got Mining Colony here. I'm gonna pull out all these bits and pieces. Here's our score sheet from last time. Hmm, look who won. Oh boy, that's so exciting. I love showing off those wins. Not competitive at all over here at Tabletop Tolson. <laughs> I've got my little bits, I've got my uh, people and my rockets, I've got my super cool gems. Oh, there's so many really wonderful bits here. Now you do get a lot more in this game than you get in the previous games. There are all these polyominoes, as you can see. So I'm going to set these out. And you've got a deck of cards, you've got your score sheet. I'm going to put that score sheet in there. Uh, you've got this uh, board, essentially, that helps you... Uh, place out all of the cool bits and stuff. So you've got all of your polyominoes, your ones, your twos, your three, your four, and your five right here. And then on this side, you've got your uh, bid track, essentially. This is going to be where you place the cards and all the bits and how people are going to auction or bid. Now, this game has a little bit more complexity on BGG. It says it's 1.88. Uh, it's best with three to four players. I would agree with that. I think that the bidding part of this, if you have fewer than three to four, uh, works fine, but I think that you need that dynamic exchange, much like in the drafting that you get uh, with the little flower shop. So the main mechanic here is the auction bidding and the uh, tile placement. So every player is going to get one of these boards and you are going to uh, be placing all of your tiles out here, all of your polyominoes, and you're going to be keeping all of your storage over here. You can keep up to five credits. Uh, you can keep each uh, one of those different uh, items. You start over here with these kind of built in, which is great. Uh, and this is the place where you actually get to start building your mining colony. So I'm going to lay this out here so you can see it. I'm going to put that box over here and show you some of these cards. So these are the cards that uh, players are going to use uh, to, to bid with, and every player has their own deck. And what you're gonna do is shuffle them up and you're gonna select a card to use to bid and select on the board which one they want first. And so much like you see in the Butterfly Garden, you're bidding with cards to have priority and selection but then there's also that really cool individual player board that is just super duper fun. All right, so these are gonna be the cards that tell you what to do. So if you take a look at this card right here, it tells you that in these uh, spots, you've got first, second, third, and fourth, and you are going to put those things there. So you put a 4B right there, a 3B, a 5B, and a 1B, and then you've got your um, kind of rocket station and a person, and then you've got these colored gems. And so they're going to give players different choices. Well, do I want this to cover up more space on my mining colony because empty spaces are negative points, but I really need to get a purple gem, or I really need to get one of those kind of rocket stations because you want to pair the same color person with the station. And that's going to be one way that you earn points in the game. So these are just gonna be those cards that you use to put out for the selection. And as you see here, 
there are three different colors of rockets and, and people. So you've got the blue, the red, and the black. Um, and then you've got your little uh, discs that tell you what kinds of buildings you have, which obviously are depicted on the board as well. Uh, these are your credits. And then all of the tiles have different stuff on it. They're not just polyominoes. They have totally different images depicted on there, places for you to build. Um, so let's say you have a blank space on one of these polyominoes. You're able to put one of these on there um, to give you the opportunity to build the way you want to build. So even though these come preset, you also have a chance to uh, change that up, which is great because it gives you that added um, strategy. Now, there are bonus. Um, whoever does something first gets these little towers, and I think that's fantastic. I love that race feature, and it's really, really important, I discovered. I also just think these gems are super pretty. They're really nice. They're, they're, they're you know, basic, but they add something to the quality of the game and the, and the, and the look. So for me, I think Mining Colony is the juiciest. I think you can tell uh, as well, you know, it's got the most bits and pieces and it has the most stuff going on. There's some really great race features to get things done before other players. But again, that bidding or auction phase is just the coolest because if you throw down all your big cards that you wanna go, you're like, I'm a heavy hitter, I wanna go first every time, you might get stuck towards the end uh, in the end rounds without the numbers you need to really get the stuff you need. So you kind of have to balance, well, maybe I shouldn't be playing such a high card to go first in this round because at the end of the game, the player who has the cards, the remaining that weren't played, that has the highest number is going to get a bonus. So that means you were playing lower cards, maybe not getting it priority, and you were sacrificing that to get that bonus at the end of the game. So there's just a lot to really like here. And again, I think this works well with three to four players just because you need that dynamic of other players kind of getting in your way and maybe choosing the, uh, the, the selection that you want, which is the polyomino with either the people or the rockets or the gems. So there's some fun, fun stuff here. And I also want to mention that I recently backed and it was successful the BYOP, Bring Your Own Pencil, Campaign for Mining Colony Duel. And that is just a print and play. It is by Dr. Steve Finn and it is going to be a one to two player version of Mining Colony. So, you know, like I said, I played that with a, a two player version and it was interesting, it was fun, I loved it, I, I got the game, but I think the game works best with more players. So now you can play Mining Colony in this dual form that is really geared to just two players or you can play against the, you know, bots or the, the AI of the game um, and you can just play with one, like you could just do solo of Mining Colony. So I'm really excited that I backed that and that it's available because I think there's a lot to like here with Mining Colony. Okay, time for my final take. I have explained and shown you just a little bit of what these games do, their basic mechanics, and how they work. So for me, the one that I think I would come back to more often than not is probably the little flower shop. I think that there's something really fun here with the drafting and the player board. There's a lot more going on than at first glance. And I think that the solo variant of this is really dynamic. I find that to be super appealing. I love the way that it works. I think it's smart. And because it's a 20 minute game, it takes between 20 and 30 minutes to play. People feel like they've got their own board in their own area, but that drafting is just dynamite. It really is super, super cool. So for me, the little flower shop, out of these three, I'm gonna play probably more regularly, but coming in a close, close second is Mining Colony. Mining Colony has something going on that is just great, and it's that bidding. There's something so fantastic and like just heavy about bidding. Sometimes you really need something and you just go for it. Um, there are never any ties because every single player deck has a totally unique number. So there's never gonna be any confusion of, well, I've got 12 and I've got 12 too, and what about turn order? Nah, don't worry about that, right? Doesn't matter. 
So you just play your card and there's a clear winner, there's a clear second place, and even if you don't go first, you still might get what you want. And I love that because somebody else is going for something entirely different. There's this building with the polyominoes in front of you, and I love filling in those spaces and building that mining colony. It's such a strong theme. I mean, the little flower shop is an incredibly uh, strong theme as well, and the artwork is just beautiful. So I cannot wait to see where the mining colony duel is going to lie in all of these different uh, Dr. Steve Finn games but I'm really excited for it because I think that might be better suited to the number of players that I play with the most, which is by myself or with Lewis. And then coming in third is the butterfly garden. It's really great, but I think sometimes you can have all these butterflies and you can have a real thing going and you just don't get the right cards at the top for the locations. And so I think the timing of that can be a little tricky and someone might have a whole lot of stuff that they never really got to use or apply and the game ends and it makes you feel like just a little bit unsatisfied or, uh, you know, unfinished. And so for me, I think these two games leave me feeling incredibly, you know, excited and positive and like, I, like I'm doing stuff and I'm building stuff. And I think that uh, the, the Butterfly Garden can really get you in a pickle sometimes um, with that bidding and the step to get your butterflies and then finally that last phase of the locations. Um, doesn't mean that it's a bad game. I think it's a perfectly fine game, but I'm going to play these two more often and I think they're all three worth your time though. So again, if you liked Floriferous or if you know anything about it, go watch my video on it. I made a whole video dedicated just to Floriferous if you're interested, but these are some stunning games. And yet again, I'm so excited to just get more Dr. Finn games and to play these because again, he's got something. I feel like the brevity of the games the straightforward nature of them, and just the clarity in mechanics, either one or two really strong mechanics used, just makes these games so complete and satisfying. Okay, I'll see you next time.